Hello everybody, this is September and I'm checking in from the Handwar server today. This video is going to be a follow-up video about the Ionad armor crafting video I did for 3.5. This video we're going to take a look at the cost to craft the weapons, the instruments, and the shields all the way up to Aranor tier using 3.5 pricing. I will also be submitting this video to the Tryon Creator Program as an entry for the Aranor crafting guide and a chance to win a Aranor Archeum pack, which I'm really excited about. That'd be awesome if I win that. So please remember to share this video if you find it at all helpful. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, I'm gonna shoot for this video to be under 10 minutes, uh, but I need to preface that and say, most everything you need to know about how to use the spreadsheet that's going to be included in the video description is explained in much greater detail in my previous video about the Ionad armor crafting I posted just last week. I also will post a link to that as well. There are just a few changes in the spreadsheet versus the armor one, and most notably, I decided to include what it would cost to craft the Aranor tier, although we already looked at that in a previous video before 3.5. Now that we have some solid numbers, I decided to go ahead and include the Aranor weapons in this video. And I also included a switch so you can see the values from your server no matter where you play, EU or NA. All right, so moving right along, the first tab here is called the Material Cost tab. Here you're going to see the values for pretty much anything that you will be using to craft any type of weapon, armor, shield, instrument in 3.5. I have attained these values from all the servers live today. That is the North American Legacy, the North American Fresh Start, EU Legacy, and EU Fresh Start. If you want to download this spreadsheet and just change or update these values as they change, all you have to do is change the values on this tab, the material cost tab. Everything else in the spreadsheet will automatically update to the values you put in this section. The next tab is the weapon cost tab. Here we look at crafting up to Aranor via the normal crafting station. That is starting here outlined in black as called path number one, as well as using the armorsmith house labeled uh, starting with this black label called path number two. Weapon types are grouped by the materials and the respective regrade cost. One-handed metal weapons, one-handed wooden weapons, two-handed metal weapons, two-handed wooden weapons, which also includes the bow, and finally shield and instruments. So you start at the top of the spreadsheet in column B1 or B row 1 by selecting your server. The spreadsheet will automatically update to those values recorded on your server type. Finally, if you want to know what an item costs to craft, scroll over to the right and take a look at the green sections. For example, here in row O, you will notice the cost to craft an artificer weapon at the standard workbench comes out to uh, about 43 gold. Remember the armor housing values which are in path number two is actually the cheapest options for crafting, but I felt it was important to record the lower tier or the common crafting stations for those who may not have access to a armor smith house just yet. Don't worry if you're one of those guys because in the long run, you're not going to save a whole lot by using the armor smith house. Even at max tier, if you scroll all the way down to Aranor, I don't know, around 250 gold, so the cost is not saving you that much by using the armor. This last tab is how I calculated the regrade cost. To do, to do this, I actually personally upgraded one weapon from the apprentice level all the way to Ionad Divine. I recorded the values on the spreadsheet in pink. Those are the values that I had personally observed while I was upgrading my weapon. Then I used formulas to apply the same percentage increase to the other weapon types. It's pretty standard stuff until you reach the tiers where you have to make a decision, do you use a charm or not? But just like in the armor video, at Arcane and Heroic, there is no question about it, always use a charm. It isn't until you reach the upgrade uh, from Unique where things get a little weird, and that only happens in the Delphinaut and Ionad tiers where you uh, must get to both Celestial and Divine, respectively. It turns out that 
<laughs> in Delphina, the two-hand weapons and bows will actually benefit from using a yellow or red charm, while nothing else will, so you might as well just do it standard. Uh, the one-hand weapons, the one-hand uh, one hand weapons and shields, you're just better off using no charms. This is due to the higher cost to upgrade the two-hand weapons and the bows, and that is at the point where using charms becomes beneficial. The next thing I need to talk about is the way I figured out the Ionad weapons going to Divine and how I figured out if you should use a Resplendent Scroll or not um, at the Unique Tier. So the first thing I had to do was figure out how much it would cost to craft a Divine without using a Resplendent Scroll, which I've done so here. What, what's more is because at Celestial Grade your weapon has a chance to break, you actually have to start using No Break Charms. I mean, it's a no-brainer. The, the, the cost of the weapon is so high, you really need to use the no-break charms. In this case, using both superior yellow and superior reds with no-break charms is recommended. Okay, so now on to the resplendent scrolls. Using a resplendent scroll can, in some cases, completely skip the celestial grade, saving you that entire cost over there in pink. To figure out exactly how often that will happen, I took 20% of the regrade chance, then I've subtracted out the cost of the resplendent scroll, as you can see here in this purple area. At every level, there is a potential positive savings, meaning you should always use a resplendent scroll at unique Ioned, even if you do not have a charm. Though Using a charm shows a higher possible savings. This is because the success chance is just simply higher, if you are wondering. Well, that is the spreadsheet in a nutshell. I did my best to keep this video as short as possible. But before I end, I have to thank some people. First, I need to thank my first and only Patreon, Cody, who is on his second month of Patreon support. I really appreciate it, man. I made this spreadsheet live on Twitch, so if you're interested in how I made it and want to watch my Twitch channel for some archive videos, uh, you can go ahead and do it, but be warned, it took 11 hours. <laughs> I also need to thank Caveman Sean, who did an amazing donation uh, during my Twitch stream. Thank you very much. I also need to thank Master Busa 2 and Master Doom, uh, who both donated bits while I made the spreadsheet. You guys rock. I also need to thank Alfred, who pledged a donation if I were to make this spreadsheet. There was actually no doubt I was going to do it, but he helped me nudge, nudge me along to get it done sooner rather than later. And finally, I need to thank all you viewers and all you subscribers. I really appreciate all your support, all your subs, and all your likes, uh, your Twitch, your Twitter follows. I really, really thank you. And those of you who haven't done any of that but also have found me in-game and just said thank you, that matters a lot too. So thank you very much for all that. Um, as always, my goal in these videos is to make them not only helpful but also informative. So if you feel like I have lived up to that goal, please remember to share this video. Until next time, September saying, be well.